Hey everyone, so today I wanted to do the reading habits tag. I know this tag is kind of old, but I've seen it going around booktube and I thought it was really fun. Um, since my channel is fairly new, I thought it'd be a great way to get to know me, kind of learn like what kind of reading habits I have. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into the list starting with number one. Do you have a certain place at home to read? Um, I generally will read in my, ben my bedroom, on my bed, or on the couch in the living room. I'm not really picky as long as it's comfortable uh, when I'm home. So anywhere really, as long as it's comfortable. Number two, bookmark a random piece of paper. I have to admit that I have a lot of bookmarks. I've gone to Barnes and Noble and bought those magnetic bookmark packs and I can't find any of them. Like within, mo within a month of buying them, I lose them. So I always end up using like the most random things as my bookmarks. Uh, I've used pieces of paper. I have used candy wrappers. My favorite bookmark of choice is actually, let me find it. Uh, these here, I'm not sure if you can see it. They're like post-it notes. Uh, what I like about these is that they stick to the page, so if you drop your book, you'll still have your place as, as opposed to like a traditional bookmark that might fall out and then you have to scramble and search for what page you left off at. Um, but the, mo the weirdest thing I have used for a bookmark, I have gotten a book and I have gotten another book and placed it inside the book that I was reading. And I would just set it on my table like this. And that is the most random thing I've used as a bookmark. I don't do that often, but um, when I do, it's, it means that, you know, that's the only thing I can find. Number three. Can you just stop reading or do you have to stop after a chapter or a number of pages? Um, I prefer to stop at a chapter, but if I'm getting, if it's late at night and I'm getting really tired and there's a lot of pages left until that chapter ends, I will at least try to make it to the bottom of the page so the next day, or when I pick up the book again, I can start fresh at the top of the next page. Number four, do you eat or drink while reading? I generally don't, only because I can't do those things at the same time. I, I might have like a bottled water nearby, um, but generally I can't chew and read at the same time. It's too distracting for me. But if I'm going through like a long reading stretch, like four to six hours that I've been reading, I will stop and make myself a snack. Um, but I have to eat and, and read in increments. Like I have to eat for a minute and then read for a minute. I can't do them at the same time. I don't know why. It's just too hard for me. Number five, do you watch TV or, t or listen to music while reading? I generally like it quiet when I read, but um, if there is noise, like if I'm in the same room with my kid who's watching TV, um, I don't mind it. I just prefer it to be quiet, but I do also read during commercials when I'm, re when I'm watching my nightly shows. So um, noise doesn't bother me, not too much. Number six. One book at a time or several at once. I'm definitely the type of person that likes to read several books at once, um, but they can't be on the spec the same spectrum. Like it has to be like a book of poetry or a book of fiction, or if they're both fiction, they have to be totally opposite storylines. Maybe like one about dragons and one about ghosts. They both can't be about the same topic or I'll get myself confused with what, which story is doing what. Number seven, reading at home or everywhere. I prefer to read at home, but I can read other places like at the doctor's office or at the salon. But when I am um, reading other places like the doctor's office, it's, it's, not the same, it's not the same for me because when I'm away from home, I have like really high anxiety and I can't immerse myself in the story like I can at home. So I do read other places, but I just don't like to. Number eight, reading out loud or silently in your head. I like to read silently in my head. I think it, uh, when I do that, I'm able to imagine the characters better. I, I can picture their voice in my head, how they say things. Um, I can vision visualize their, their movements um, and how the story's flowing better when I read silently to myself. When I read out loud, it kind of distracts me, like my own voice distracts away uh, from the story. It, I don't know if that's weird or not. Number nine, do you ever read ahead or skip pages? I don't. 
And when I think about that, I just don't know how that would work. Like if I were to skip pages, I'd be so worried that I would miss like critical parts of the storyline. Um, I know there are people that like to jump to the end of the book to see how it ended. Uh, I can't see myself doing that. Like if I wanted to know how the book ended, like if I just couldn't wait, then I would look up the spoilers on the internet. I think that would be easier as opposed to trying to jump to the end of the book and trying to find um, the critical parts of what happened at the end. So no. And then if I were to spoil myself, um, that would mean that I was not interested in com in reading the rest of the book. Because if I was spoiled then, there's no way I was going to finish reading that book because I would already have known how it ended. And I have to sneeze. Ooh. Okay, whoops. Number 10, breaking the spine or keeping it like new. The books I own, I like to keep the spine like new, but I, I don't go out of my way to do that. Like I don't read awkwardly. I always read comfortably and I don't know if it's the way I read or if it's how the book is made. But generally, um, the spines on the books that I own, they, they're still intact. There's no creases. Um, so yeah, but I don't go out of my way to keep them like new. Uh, if my if I do have a book that ends up creasing, you know, it's it's not the end of the world for me. It's not really a big deal. Um, and if it got so bad, if it got really bad, then I would just replace the book with a new one. Uh, if if I wanted to, you know. But I, I, you know, I'm not too anal about it. I like it like new. But if it's not that way, then that's fine too. Really. <clears throat> Number 11, and this is also the last question. Do you write in books? I do not. And then. Um, I don't know I, I just can't for myself I can't write in my own books that I own because you know the ones that I own and really like and love and cherish I want to keep as mint as possible I want to keep them crisp and uh, uh, well maintained and I just can't picture myself writing in books um, and the margins are small like what would I be writing in there if it was like a sentence that I really liked I would copy that sentence in my journal. I have a journal for like favorite quotes, favorite sentences. Um, and if it was like a scene that I particularly liked, I might put a post-it note, but I just can't imagine myself writing in the book. And like, say if you did write yourself a note, how would you find that page again without having to read through the entire book again to see that, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe some people write in their books as kind of like a journal to themselves. Um, to kind of remind them themselves how much they enjoyed the story. I don't really know. I don't write in my books, but that does leave me a little bit more curious. Like people that do write in their books, what what do you write? I, I what do you write in your books? I'm curious now. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the list of questions. Uh, who do I tag? I tag everyone who still has the book "Shatter Me" by Tahir Mafi on their TBR. Uh, other than that. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.